Hey, it's Dr. Rucker. Today I'm going to do a little presentation on therapeutic phlebotomy. This is the medical procedure I order on patients that are on testosterone therapy because the patients build up too many red blood cells. So by doing this overview, I will describe a little about lab testing, the procedure, a little about the paperwork, and an example of why are we checking blood work and how do we act on it at Reverse Medical. So the first thing I'm going to put up here is something some of you may have learned in grade school. Therapeutic phlebotomy was a uh, very popular in the 1700s and there's probably some controversy but apparently it killed George Washington. You, you can see he came down with an ordinary cold, cold and sore throat. He was bled by several doctors. You can look it up and I believe this heavily contributed to his death. Well, we're not going to do that to you guys. We're doing this medically and therapeutically. So the official term is called polycytemia. And um, what happens is the testosterone stimulates extra red cell production. And this can build up too many red cells. And you can see down here, this could lead to uh, high blood pressure issues, stroke, heart attack, things like that. So we want to we want to avoid that. And that's why it's important to get rid of these extra red cells. Now, that's one of the benefits of testosterone. It helps people with muscular and athletic performance by having more red cells around to deliver oxygen, but it can be too high at times. Next slide is, um, why does this sometimes happen? Um, not, that, not that every time this will happen. I, I think it's about 20% of patients personally, do, and it's especially intramuscular injections. Um, other, otherwise, smokers also can have this issue, So, but testosterone is the uh, reason that we're dealing with it. So how do you identify it? I look at the hemoglobin number. It goes, many established patients will check hemoglobin about every six months. We'll change the protocol depending on how high it gets. And you can see the average normal range is a hematocrit 41 to 50, 13.5 to 17 on hemoglobin. So chronically, we definitely want to stay mid to 14. So 14 to 16 are numbers I like seeing on my patients. Some groups will call out the emergency and have people stop, but instead by having these type of protocols in place, we have a way to, to deal with this because it says the testosterone loss would cause low sex drive, sexual dysfunction, lack of energy and fatigue, fat gain, so we don't want to just have people blindly have those issues. So this is the type of form that I send to the patient, so it really helps you understand how it's very specific. The reason you don't just go to the blood bank and donate blood is once you get a little too high, I have them take off, uh, you know, 500 and I, you can go every week. That's the difference. Once your hemoglobin's elevated, you go every week until we get you down to 13. And this is for the patients that are exquisitely sensitive to testosterone and raising their red blood cell counts. So Basically, I just want to provide an overview of the fact that we're watching this, how I address it, and ultimately it's a form that you have to get from your blood bank. I can send them this type of blank form for one blood, but sometimes they like their own form. So that, that's the exact overview, and um, you go into the blood bank, and if, if you use the therapeutic form, they'll discard your blood. It's not exactly the style of blood they're looking for with the extra hemoglobin in it in the first place. But if you're just a moderate patient or don't have this issue, then it's a good idea just to go every three months to the blood bank. They'll, they'll take your donation, and that keeps your blood count low. So that's the overview. I hope you were able to get good information out of this video, and don't hesitate to directly... Uh, ask me questions, talk to your health liaison, and uh, thanks for watching.